Well, let's bring in Mr. Vincent Wani. He's a business and investment consultant. He's looked at those and, uh, well, let's find out. Good morning, first, and thank you for joining us today on the program, Mr. Wani. Well, having looked through this unemployment thank report. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, now, looking through some of these, sometimes, well, when this report come in, they may look at it in different ways and identify uh, some areas that they need improvement upon, but there are areas, too, that we've been struggling or grappling with for a long time. So what stuck out for you when you looked at that report? Okay. Um, one, thank you very much for having me on your show this morning. Um, the first observation is the timing and timeline of your report. Um, for the past two years, we've been yearning for um, labor reports labor statistics and finally we got it the last time we saw it was um the last time we saw it was in third quarter 2018 and here we are um, um in, uh, here we are we have uh, another report so we have to thank uh, nbs and if we can be having this report at least once in a year that would make uh, that, that would make life a little bit easier for analysts and their uh, stakeholders having said that it's no longer news the report released on friday last week and the number of um, unemployed Nigeria jumping and unemployment rate moving from 23.1% uh, to 27.1%. I can tell you that it is even a little bit lower. This number is even a little bit lower than uh, we had projected. We thought it would go to 30 or 30 something percent. You know, so yes, unemployment rates have gone up. And if you look at the trend from, um, if you look at the trade from, uh, 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 over the last three years, it's been trending up from 16% up, up, uh, up uh, to 27.1% now. The issue is not even about the unemployment. Or we know that Nigerians are having challenges getting jobs. But the structure of that data, if you dig deep into that data, look at the um, demographic, uh, uh, the demographic characteristics of that data, you find out that female women are worse hit than male. You know, um, again, people living in the villages on the rural area are worse hit than people living in the city. You know, again, the youth from 15 years to like 24 years are the worst hit. Almost 50 percent unemployed, about 48 percent of people in this bracket are unemployed. You know, as we move from that 24 percent to maybe 32 percent, 24 years to 32 years, you get another bracket. Over 30 percent of them are unemployed. So these are the areas, these are the, these are the policy areas that government will begin to look at to see hey, what is going on. Also look at where people live, you know, where people live. I've spoken about urban areas and rural areas uh, uh, and showing that people in the urban are having it a little bit better. But wherever you find yourself in the bracket, whether as a man, as a male or female, whether as a rural dweller or urban dweller, whether as, um, uh, 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 as educated or uneducated, there are issues. And for me, the most puzzling aspect of that data is about educational segmentation of people that are unemployed. You find out that people that didn't even go to school at all and graduates, Nigerian graduates, are competing at 40 something percent unemployment rates. The segment of the society in terms of uh, education that is maybe the best at vocational training, you know, trade, and commercial uh, uh, segment. You know, that is not in the chart. We have about 17%. That's the lowest. Even people that have PhD, masters, are, uh, the unemployment rate is over 23% in that segment. So that goes to show that skill, skill and skill acquisition is the way to go. Mm. You know, these are what the data is telling us. And how to go out of this is about education. We need to educate ourselves, at least to be self-employed. And we also need to make sure that our vocational training and skill acquisition is um, institutionalized and we have to clean up that uh, space because we have seen that that space is the space where we have the lowest level of unemployment in the country. You know? No. And that is the reason, of course, why Anambra State is the, is, is, uh, the uh, number is the best in the, in the whole country. You know, we want to say something. Yeah, very quickly, um, you, you looked at some demographics of location and gender. I'm actually very, very concerned about the demographics of between age 15 and 34. If we combine the two, the two segments, you looked at 15 to 24 and the, um, 25 to 34. If we look at those two, they are the worst hit. Now, 
in another 10 years, this age range is going to be, of course, more, more than, uh, they're going to be 10 years older and consequently fall into other demographics. How do we ensure that those figures do not remain the way they are 10 years from now with this particular demographic? Policy intervention, very quickly. We have to move very quickly. See, we're already late, but it's better late than never. The two ways through which countries like ours, India have done it, China have done it, to lift them, their people out of poverty is through education, skill acquisition. That is the only way out. That is the, We can build all the infrastructure, of course, infrastructure, we don't even have it. But education is the only way out. You know, India had um, a, a national education policy well implemented for a period of 10 years before they begin to see the results. So the only way to make sure that in 10 years' time we're not going to have people between 15 or 16 to 24 whose unemployment rate will be over 50%, is for us to do something about our education. Very, so, very, but, but, very but, but Mr. Wani, uh, as important as, as that is, but when they then look at the figure which you spoke about, about those who have, you know, the MSCs, the PhDs, they are equally hard hit with the unemployment rate. So will these other ones now look at that figure and say, why should I go get it? When look at them, they're unemployed. That is what I said, that we need to look at our education now policy. I say educational policy. How do we connect that PhD, that BSc, that MSc to skill acquisition? It's not just theoretical um, uh, uh, engineers, uh, theoretical um, uh, economists, theoretical uh, business, uh, you know, that is, that is not the way. Look at what Switzerland is doing. You work and you acquire skill at the same time. We need to do what they call dual educational um, model where you are learning in school and also have a, a trade, something you can do with your hands, not speaking grammar or looking for an office white collar job. That is the way to go. Skill acquisition. See, in Anambra State, why do Anambra State have the listed uh, unemployment rate? All of those people you see that are, have, they have their job, they have skills, they are also educated. They are graduates. You know, but they've gone to make use of their own hands. That is and the way something, to go. Just, just one thing, uh, Dr. Wani. There is something on this, you know, figure that uh, we are talking about, the li this labor statistics. Well, talking about the states, you just talked about Anambra State. Just st uh, two steps away from that is Sokoto State, which is also very, very low, according to this labor statistics on, on, uh, on the employment rate. But if you look at the poverty index, Sokoto State is worst hit. How do we marry those two figures? I am telling you, yesterday night when I was looking at this figure from uh, NBS, I had some challenges, and I'm going to go back to give it a second level anal analysis. You know, because you say that um, Imo State is the worst hit when it comes to unemployment rate, almost for almost 40, uh, 48% unemployment rate in Imo. But that is also one of the states where education is married with um, uh, entrepreneurship, Imo, you know? So it doesn't, and when you look at life expectancy, you look at poverty rate. Uh, south, South, South East, and South West, they are, they are, they are, they are doing, doing far better than the uh, North Central, North East, and, uh, and North West. You know, the, the chart is just here, life expectancy. You find out that people in the uh, North, um, uh, South West, South East, and South South, the life expectancy far higher compared to the Northern part of the country. If you also show the, the uh, poverty, uh, rate of poverty, the same, the same issue. So for me to be seen that in terms of uh, this, this number just released by N NBS, is showing that the top four states that are worse hit in terms of unemployment are Anambra State, uh, sorry, uh, Imbo State, Delta State, um, uh, Aquaibon State, and the uh, River State. It's very difficult to situate it, but then I, uh, we we'd really need to interrogate the data a little bit more. Hmm. Now, I, I'm also very concerned. Um, you've talked about the skill uh, gap and all of that. That would probably speak to the micro, small, and medium enterprises, doesn't it? with what we have, how yes. quickly do you think that they can intervene? Because if you have that skill we are talking about, you are not going to start by building a conglomerate or a big, you know, hiring 50 people at a go and starting your business with 1 billion. No. Skilled acquisition ensures that at the end of the day, you are able to maybe start uh, as low as barber salon, shoe making in a conventional way, not the normal uh, 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 shoe, um, shoe repair that, that, we, that we see. A little bit organized with, with little education. You start with small businesses. You know that from there, you are able to 
provide services for small uh, medium scale um, companies or big scale companies. You supply them, you provide some little services. That's the way to go. Nigeria is boasting of having about 17.5 million SMEs in Nigeria right now, employing about five, average of five people, you know. But since um, uh, recession we had in 2016, and 2017, and now COVID-19, we've seen that a lot of these SMEs, they are out of business for one reason or the other. You know, from uh, March this year to around the um, end of June, you know, over uh, uh, over over 500,000 Nigerians that are directly employed, full-time employment, have lost their job. And when you see this type of thing happen, um, people supporting them, we call them maybe uh, support staff or... or, or um, underemployed people that are working for them. It's always a multiple of four people per one uh, full-time employment. Another issue I also find with this data is that the underemployment is very, very high, but the NBS measured underemployment by people that are working uh, between 20 hours to 29 hours. There are people that work only five hours a day, but they are any more than people working um, uh, eight hours, 10 hours in a day. So I was thinking that we have to use wage rate to even measure the underemployment. Because I've seen people that work 40 hours every week. That is eight hours a day. Yet they are earning less than 20,000 naira in Lagos as security men all over the places. So it's not about number of hours that somebody is working. That you, I'm not sure that's the best to measure underemployment. But how much you are taking home? Because that spells your poverty, you know, the ability to buy and sell. Perhaps market, that's... Not uh... how much time... Perhaps that uh, figure is uh, drawing a line between employment and income. That's on the one hand. However, if you remember on the 11th of June this year, the vice president, while pre presenting the economic sustainability plan to the president, he said that in the, the number of people in Nigeria that may lose their jobs because of this COVID-19 may get up to some 39.2 million by the end of the year by December. Now, of course, there is a sustainability, economic sustainability plan that they have come up with. I don't know if you have looked at it. Do you think it is something that can give us hope? Well, I am not in a good position to um, um, to give so much credence or um, otherwise to that document. But I was thinking that the point where we found ourselves since 2016 recession, where we've been having negative growth and finally positive growth, but very slow, requires that we shouldn't be talking about sustainability now. We're still talking about survival. And from survival, you are going to move to recovery. From recovery to growth and from growth to sustainability. If you are not growing, and how are you going to be, what are you sustaining? If you are not growing, where everybody have signal that Nigeria is going to move into a heavy recession, was that what we had a few years ago? You know, IMF projected minus five percent growth by the end of the year. World Bank projected even about minus three point five percent. Minister of Finance have signaled that everybody is signaling serious negative growth, and here we are talking about sustainability. So, are we sustaining negative growth? I was thinking that you sustain when you have grown. You know, for for some time when we are growing at six percent. Or plus, we can say, okay, let's sustain a group to 10%. But now we should be focusing on survival and recovery. You know, and that is why I like uh, the economic recovery growth group plan that was launched in 2017. You know, more probably we just decided to build on that uh, growth and recovery, uh, um, recovery and growth plan. But the truth is that that growth and recovery plan of 2017 that was supposed to expire next year, 2021, have not really, does not really satisfied its objective or its uh, performance indicator. And I was thinking that the best thing to have done is to, is to have economic and uh, economic growth and recovery plan B or two, instead of having a sustainability plan because there is nothing to sustain as far as I'm concerned for now. Do you, do you then see any role in all of these for the states? The state have a, can I say, even a far more central role to play than the federal. Of course, the federal have to deal with the policy, macroeconomic policy, physical policy. But the state have to step in. And if you meet them, they will tell you, hey, the federal have um, um, uh, tied their hands, fiscal federalism, they don't have money, and all, all those things. But the state need to at least begin to see how they can develop SMEs. We have been talking about skill, and one of the major um, fallout in this data or lessons from this data is that the more we develop ourselves in this country, 
where we have a direct direct skills, we will be able to lower unemployment and match that with education. Because that education, how you behave, customer service, being polite, will be taught. You know, relationship, networking. But that hard skill is very, very important. That is the major disconnect. And I think that is where the state government need to come in very quickly. Especially when some reports indicate that, uh, look, in about five, ten years, almost 30, 40 percent of some of the courses in the universities will be obsolete. It leaves you asking more questions as to whether or not we're going to be left behind. But we do thank you for some of those, uh, for all of your thoughts, actually, uh, Mr. Dr. Vincent Wani, business and investment consultant. Thank you.